thesis Ibo area 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 please subscribe to our youtube channel also click the bell icon Ame renames military operation in southeast wow it was changed from Egweke to Atelogudo. The authorities of the Nigerian Army wish to inform the general public of the change of name of one of its annual training exercises, codenamed Exercise Egweke to Exercise Atelogudo. The annual training exercise commenced in 2016 and has consistently recorded remarkable successes since its introduction. That's according to a report. The exercise, which covers the southeast region of the country, is designed to combat, according to the army, criminal activities including kidnappings, armed robbery, intercourt, and communal clashes among other sundry crimes. Colonel Aminu Eliasu, who is the Deputy Director of the Army Public Relations, said all other information relative to the exercise are contained in the previous press statement and press conference issued by the Army Headquarters, and they remain unchanged. It quoted the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Toko Yusufu Buratai, retreating the commitment of Nigerian Army to protect the lives and properties of citizens, particularly during these ember months and the fast approaching Yuletide season. Wow. So, uh, Operation, um, if I not, was the Operation Ekweke Python Dance, Enwega Fozo. They have changed the name. Ndebanye. <laughs> Even a Utemu no pressure na Ivana Bakewe Gu na South Southern Nigeria. If I not one can day southwest near Yoruba Crocodile Smile. Hm it is it Bobataho at Bobataho Abihana he tila ye and I was a cause at a logo can it is like it. Chinika bell in the south belly. Hey Chinika bell in the south belly and it is like at a logo get that. Next time, I rename Mukwe. I be a quite tie na koko ba e ndelda sa e ona toha. Okay na. Well, there are cracks in the Ohaneze. The elder Ohaneze uh, disowns Isi Guzoro, led Ohaneze Ndibo Youth Council. Ibo, a pair social cultural organization, Ohaneze Ndibo has disowned the Okechuku Isi Guzoro, led Ohaneze Ndibo Youth Council. Uh, this was in a statement issued by Chief Emeka Atama who are the publicity secretary and ad media advisor to the group. He, he described the Ohanese Ndibo youth as non-existent but mere expletives of disgruntled power seekers who were shamed out of leadership of the authentic youth wing of Ohanese Ndibo. This is what the statement reads. Ordinarily, one would have regarded the recent rantings of one Okechuku Isiguzor and his cohorts parading themselves as leaders of a non-existent group called Ohanez Ndibu Youth Council worldwide as mere expletives of disgruntled power seekers who were shamed out of the leadership of the authentic youth wing of the Ohanez Ndibu worldwide years ago for their nefarious activities. The ideal thing would have been to consign their outbursts and vituperations against the highly respected leader of Ndibo Worldwide, Chief John Nyangwo, into the trash can where it belongs, as dwelling on it would inexorably accord them recognition that it did not deserve. It is imperative to make certain clarifications for the less informed who may swallow their bad coated Berigren's hook, line, and sinker. In the first instance, it is pertinent to uh, make things clear about Okechuku Isiguzoro. It's quite true that he was elected the Ohanese Youth Leader in 2014, but due to some disagreement and misappropriation of fund, an inordinate quest for power, he was removed with his executive in 2016 during the tenure of Chief Igarewe, Chief Modo's predecessor. So Chief Modo was not even responsible for his ordeal. All attempts he made to uh, trying to keep himself in power were quashed by the court. So the court has actually nullified his uh, planned stay. He said, not being a recognized body by Ndibo, one wonders, therefore, where they derive their powers from to decide who and who will be put forward by Ndibo for the presidential race in 2023 in the country. Moreover, the President General Chief Mudo, as personal choice, does not belong to any political party. And even if he did, the constitution of the Haneze Ndibo debars him from partisan politics. You see what is happening? Uh, I think it's a case of power tussle between the 
higher ohaneze which consists of elders and the lower one the youth ohaneze and it's like the youth ohaneze has gone further to by themselves point out or elect who is going to be able presidential candidate for 2023 election we were the leadership of Hanese said that the president cannot choose for Ndibo he is not to get involved in any political party that is how the organization is set to function but it's like the youth wing has contravened the rules and they are now reminded that they have not been in existence that they have been washed off since 2016 Of course you already know South East leaders met with Buhari and sought speedy completion of Enugu airport and we had they had called for the federal government intervention for the speedy completion of Enugu international airport and the rehabilitation of federal roads in the region governor david umahi who was the chairman of south east governors forum spoke on behalf of the leaders uh, they asked the president to declare a state of emergency on the roads in the south east because currently south east gas got the worst road in nigeria he said we are here to kindly urge the mr president to approve special funds for akanobian airport just like what was done to apuja airport other governors who were present at the meeting was a meka head of Imo state governor kezi bazo of abia state and governor ifanyo gwani of enugu state also senator enyi nyabaribe senate minority leader representing saudi kakos in national assembly and senator sami gu were at the meeting others include former senate president anyam payo sanyam former governors martin elechi of ebony state okwesiliezi of enugu state sullivan chime of enugu state achike odenwa of imo state and ikeri hakim also of imo state the meeting was later entered in a closed door session well uh, we thank god we had the result of the meeting that the government has approved 10 billion naira intervention fund for enugu airport and the date for the completion has changed we will a further review on that a report says south is economy slumbers as the governor fails to trigger prosperity according to the report the governor should stop blaming the center each time they blame the federal government for not looking at the zone yes the federal government has their own part their, their, their own share in the blame but the problem is the governors are not making proper use of the allocations to the states all the states in nigeria receive allocation but it depend on how you manage yours they are complaining that southeast has the highest number of abandoned projects but that is not just the case the states has more abandoned projects than the federal government according to a 2019 survey by the chartered institute of project management of nigeria so if you as a governor gets allocation to work in the state it is expected of you to make proper use of that allocation it is not meant for you to download into your personal account or siphon it through several people's account because there's a way they choose to do it now through people's account people who connive with them are moved and hidden away public funds meant for repairs meant meant to fix the state some of this money uh, are, apart from the federal government allocation there are taxes you collect taxes and the tax should work the money collected as taxes and allocations should there should be signs in the state that this the money is working it is alleged that they deceived the general public that it is the federal government that abandoned south east that the federal government is not working meanwhile there are more state projects that are abandoned and these are projects that have been commissioned rodents take over 5000 abandoned shops in anambra market Over 5000 lock up shops at the Alaba International Market or by Idemili South Local Government Area of Anambra State have been taken over by rodents and snakes following years of abandonment by their owners. The multi-million naira market located along New Newi Oba Road had been under lock and key for decades with little or no business activities going on there. A majority of the shop owners reportedly locked their shops with the intention of reopening them when the business picked up in the market. 
worried over the pitiable condition of the market. The leadership of the market has warned traders whose shops were locked to make haste to open them to avoid losing their shop over non-compliance. Caretaker committee chairman presiding officer Pastor Samuel Chupudia threatened to revoke the locked shops if the owners remain adamant on their decision. He gave them October 31st deadline or be ready to forfeit the shops. He said, if you don't open your shop between now and the end of October, by the first day of November, you have forfeited your shop to the owners of the market. The owners of this market have empowered us to open such locked shops for occupation by interested traders. Could have further explained that the market was grouped into four sections for administrative efficiency and easy identification, expressing optimism that the market will soon witness business activities. He also entered the cost effectiveness of the shops to ensure its affordability for both indigents and non indigents of the area. His words, the shop allocation is almost free. You just pay 1,000 Naira for registration and 5,000 Naira for allocation of shop to you where you stay for one year. It is just free to help the people of Oba and non indigents instead of staying at home doing nothing. On his part, the secretary, Maze Sone Agobosi, said you need not lock the shop and stay in your house. After all, the allocation of shop is free. Just 1,000 Naira registration and 5,000 thousand naira allocation for a whole year. The market's public relations officer Mr. Chukwe Buka Michael explained that the vision of the, those who built the market was to assist the people of the area fend for themselves through threading. Just stay in the market with just your six thousand naira and within two to three years you make your money, he noted. Wow. Guys, are you listening? Ndi bonde ba yona na no opportunity. Oba kwa na no ne kwa ne go ne tiye la fia. Just jide six thousand naira. Mane ga zwa fia ba ho. Bajwegan, Bajwegan, Afia, Emichikali and Eluko Kae, Meye, Bajweno, Afia, Kaligo ten years, and Mohi Fine Mene, Anna Wakuman, Nde Gold Shop, Eba Heku, Heme, Pemi, Penan, and Alha Shop. Ebony Partners Indian Government to establish electric cars assembly plant. Wow. Ebony State Government is seeking to partner with Indian Government to establish an electric automobile assembly plant in the state. Governor Mahi had paid a visit to Indian High Commission in Abuja on Wednesday where he was received by the High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. Abhay Tako. The governor, according to a statement by his special assistant on media, Francis Wise, was there to seek for partnership on importation and establishment of an assembly plant of electric mode automobile. Governor Mahe during the visit noted that electric mode automobile is not only a technology of tomorrow but a technology that cuts costs. He, according to him, his key interest in the partnership includes importation of the sample electric power tricycles, buses, motorcycles and cars, while establishment of plant for same will follow. He also won partnership in the area of agriculture with poultry, piggery, and food processing equipment. These were top on his request. He also solicited for a partnership of the brand new State University Teaching Hospital, which is presently under speedy construction. He also called on the international communities and other well-meaning Nigerians to partner with Ebony State in establishing industries, factories, and other businesses while assuring them of the readiness of the Ebony State to provide conducive environment and incentives to make their establishment thrive. The establishment quoted to the High Commissioner, Mr. Abed Saku, as expressing excitement with the governor's visit and presentation. The High Commissioner assured him of his readiness of the government of India to work with the state. Wow, Omahi is making a good move, yes. But I think there is something some, um, an elder has been raising alarm about. I don't know whether Ebony had such problem. In Enugu, some part of Enugu, lands are being sold to you and before you know it, the lands are seized. Somebody will come out and say, this land does not belong to the person that sold it to you. So Igbo land as a whole should work on this, uh, resolving this issue. People will sell land that they don't own or they will sell a community land or they will even, it will be their land, but they will, through the other door, take back what they have sold to you. We have been getting calls. People are reporting, telling us about how they lose the land they bought in mostly part of Enugu. Ebonye is calling on people to come and invest in the state. We, we played with the Southeast governors to look into land-related issues in the state. This has to stop. If you sell your land, you have sold it. Uh, the, this problem with land has to be settled. A lot of people are afraid to come and invest. The reason is 
they don't want to lose their investment they don't want tomorrow somebody will come and tell them this land you want to invest on this land you are planning to build on is not your land meanwhile you have paid for it they tell you the person who sold it to you does not have a right to the place this has to stop it is not it is not a good development Thanks for watching Ebo Area TV. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also click the bell icon. Like our Facebook page. Join our Facebook group. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Bye for now.